Welcome to this walkthrough of a mechanics problem from the A-level math syllabus. I'm thinking from an Edexcel point of view. Um, this is an old Edexcel M2 problem which I've taken from Maths and Physics Tutor. Now let's just have a quick look at the problem, the diagram. It shows a, a ladder AB. The ladder's mass is 25 kilograms. The ladder's four meters long. It's in equilibrium with one end a on a rough horizontal ground, so there's rough, there'll be friction there. And the other end, B, that's against a smooth wall. The coefficient of friction there is 11 over 25. As usual with these problems, you've got a right angle. The ladder makes an angle beta with the ground. Now, Reese is going to stand on this ladder. Um, at point C, which is 2.8 metres along the ladder, and it's going to be on the point of slipping. That's uh, crucial information because it means we'll have limited friction. I'm going to just add my own diagram to this. So I know Reese there is 2.8 metres there. I know we've got coming down from there Reese's weight which is 75 G halfway along the ladder because it's a uniform rod we're modeling it as a uniform rod I've got the mass of the ladder which is 25 G other forces here well you've got a here you've got a reaction force you can see there, there's a reaction force coming up from the ground Going that way, because it's on the point of slipping, you've got friction, but I can call that mu r, because it's limiting at the moment, because it's in the point of slipping, and we get a reaction force there. You can't call that r, good thing to call it is n. So, our first problem, we've produced a nice diagram, which is a good start. Our first problem is to find the magnitude of the frictional force. Now, so it's this, it's mu r. So let's look at the forces. So our forces. So let's go up and down. So I've got r going up, and that equals 25g, which goes down, plus 75g, that goes down. So that is 100g. So up and down, r equals 100g. Now, if we go left and right I know um, mu r n equals mu r so that's also in equilibrium so our friction there is mu r but in fact we don't need n at the moment anyway but I just wanted to show you that all we need is the idea that the friction is mu r. I know r is 100 degrees, so our friction is mu, which we know for the question they've said 11 over 25 is mu. So we can do 11 over 25 multiplied by our r here, which is 100g, and that should give us 144g. 44g newtons. There we are, job done. Now B, we're asked to find the angle beta. So we're going to find this angle beta. Now, the these problems, you often are using forces, like we've done, but we also use moments. So I'm going to take moments. And we're going to take moments from A on this occasion because that eliminates mu r and r. So moments from A. Now, let's have a look what we've got. We've got these going clockwise. These would push it clockwise and these would this would push it anticlockwise. So anticlockwise, well, I've got this n well n is actually the same as friction n is the same as the friction which is 44 g 
so I can say 44G, but then I have to multiply it by the perpendicular distance from the pivot. Now, when we do this, we think, well, this is going in that direction, there. How far would it be if I did a perpendicular detour to the pivot? So I'd stop off there and I'd go down there. So it's this length here, which is also this length. Now, if we remember, that's four meters. So this force is perpendicular distance. 2A would be four sine beta. There you go, see that? Now that's often the bit students find difficult, these perpendicular distances. You also need to make sure your trig is solid as well. Now we've got these two anti -clock, sorry, these two clockwise forces and we need to be careful here. So let's look at this one, 25G, it's going here. So the perpendicular distance would be this. So imagine a triangle here, hypotenuse two. So it's going to be times two. It's going to be adjacent relative to there, relative to beta. So it's going to be cos beta. And here we've got another one, 75G. So we imagine a big long line. Where can I get off and go perpendicular to the point A? It's here. So again, we've got another right angle triangle. That's how it works. It would be good to practice working out these perpendicular distances because it's a crucial step. 2.8 cos beta. Okay, so four times 44, let's tidy this up. 176, 176 G equals. Now 25 G times two, that gives you 50 G. 75G times 2.8 is 210. Add these together, you get 260G. Sorry, I've missed out the sign there. So that's 176G sine beta. It's got a bit carried away with the actual forces. I need to remember the angles. Cos beta. Because these are both cos beta here. So I can just add together these coefficients. Well, what do we get? We get sine, I'll just move this up so you can see. We get sine beta over cos beta equals 260G over 176G. G's cancel out. And you can actually call that tan, because it's sine over cos. Tan beta equals 260 over 176. So I can put that into my calculator, do my arc tan of 260 over 176, and to the nearest degree, beta comes out as 56 degrees. So I've done this bit by moments. And my big tip here with the moments is practicing those ver uh, perpendicular distances from the pivot, that's crucial. There is one last question, and you often get one of these at the end, state how you've used how you have used the modeling assumption that Reese is a particle. Well, Reese obviously isn't a particle, he's a person, but we model him as a particle and that means that his weight just acts at one point. So he can just, a particle, you can just draw it down like that, his weight. So I hope that is clear. I want you to see those resolving forces, think about what's happening up and down, left and right and then the idea of taking moments. That's a classic example of a difficult style problem. Thank you very much.